all the things about the, the, the right to vote and all the different things. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, the ego, it, it's cure for it is to compensate and go the other way and develop pride in your particular mm -hmm. separate yeah. <laughs> identity as mm -hmm. if you can compensate and overcome mm -hmm. right. the victimhood. Yeah. That's true. But again, something that came good out of the Holocaust, at least I think so, was Victor Frankl and like how mm -hmm. he saw that like regardless of what people did to him and did to his body, mm -hmm. they couldn't touch his mind, you know, mm -hmm. and he could maintain whatever he chose and he could choose his response regardless of what mm -hmm. came on and added from the screen, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, that's quite inspiring, you know. And that's some of the stuff that uh, you know, lead you to see that there are other people that understand what this stuff's about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And apply it. Mm -hmm. and yeah. apply it. Yeah, and apply it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this perception of the universe as God created it, it would be impossible to think of him as loving. Who has decreed that all things pass away, ending in death, and disappointment, and despair, can but be feared. He holds your little life in his hand, but by a thread, ready to break it off without regret or care, perhaps today, or if he waits, yet is the ending certain. Who loves such a God that is not of love, because he has denied that life is real? Death has become life's symbol. His world is now a battleground where contradiction reigns and opposites make endless war. Where there is death, is peace impossible? It, it almost sounds funny when you read it that way, but then again, you know, the thing that people say is, you know, God's not ready for me yet, or God will take me when yeah. it's my time, or, you know, that, that those are just said so casually as if, that's the way it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or life yeah. is part of death. I mean, that's the thing yeah. I've been hearing a lot. Life is just part of death. That's part of like this natural yeah. way, way of nature. Right on. Can't get out of life alive. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about opposites. Yeah. Trying to pull opposites together. It's like, you yeah. know. So here's this thing that's guaranteed in the world's eyes, and so our whole world is based on preventing it, pre to, avoiding, till it. avoiding it, delaying it, delaying it living oh. one day at a time, because if this is all I have, boy, I am going to live it to the hilt, yeah. and denying, it, it, denying it, softening it, softening it. I'll never forget, Michael was in nursery school, and his teacher called and said, did somebody die in your family, or something going on about death, and I said, no, why, and he said, because Michael sat in school today, they were eating their Oreo cookies and milk, all these little kids are smiling, happy, and where Michael said, I'm going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die. And all these kids are eating their Oreo cookies, you know, and it's like, God, and called me up and I said, oh, no, I said, uh, you know, we just talk about death, we, t we had talked about death very openly, and Michael just took it as, you know, he's just going to go and share, share, share. Yeah. <laughs> you know, over cookie time in nursery school, you know. Like little Buddha when he yeah. comes back and shares with his dad, uh -huh. right. you're going to die, you're right. going to die, Michael, yeah. too. I thought, I thought I'd tell you guys. Yeah, both Mandy and Matthew went through stages where they talked about it a lot. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, and they would just bring it up like that, and it was like, <laughs> you know. But yeah, there's this feeling, and yeah. people look at little yeah. kids talking about that. It's like yeah. weird. And of course, the kids don't know what they're talking about. No. And nor do the adults. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that's what's so neat about this is we're going to try to really lift it and pull it back now to see it in the mind because <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense yeah, yeah. when you look at it out there on yeah. the screen. It is important, though, for children to realize that I work at a grief center for children and they, you know, have lost someone significant in their family. And here they are, you know, not knowing how to deal with that mm -hmm. and uh, you know again, they, 
that put a heavy burden on us with that period. Yeah, you know, yeah. As we see right now, right. as we're talking about it, right. our culture has put that heavy burden on us, so to speak, mm-hmm. this concept of death. And um, that's but does the concept of death come from the culture yeah, and the culture, society, the, or does it come from okay. within the mind? We have to go real deep because otherwise, then we can get upset. Why can't I live in a more open culture? You see, then I'm back to a victim again. I'm back even, to the you know, even the thing of a common thing that I hear a lot, and I've said it myself, is that I've lost. You know, that somebody has been lost. Mm-hmm. And that's something that, I mean, if it's even talked about in that way, I mean, that, that's backwards, too. I'm right. saying that I've lost But, but that is the I, experience for a child. Well, you know, when they come in. It seems and, to be, right. but only if they see it that way. And if they're being you know, encouraged that, to continue to see it that way. Right, and that's the whole purpose of talking about it, so that they can see it differently. Yeah. It's to see that they don't lose yeah. exactly. anything. Right. But they, they feel yeah. they that feel there it. is oh, yes. a lot. Yes. They perceive they, it, and adults yeah. too. Right. I mean, if you go around with adults, mm-hmm. is there loss? Yes. Is there grief? Yes. And is there yeah. death? You know, right. But see, the world. what I'm hearing in this too, a little bit from you, Linda, is that like you gotta help them to understand. And see, that's the, the point that like I as a person can't make David understand anything. No, but I can't fix it. But I can have the Holy Spirit come yes. through me and give him the picture and do whatever's necessary right. to do that. Right. right. And that's the point, you know. Yeah. And, and I don't see yeah. it as a loss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm clear. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Then exactly. I don't have to say that to somebody else. And I'm, oh, you're going to lose your husband, you know, really. He's, mm-hmm. but, but I can just be coming yeah. through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and because of that clear space and where you're at, I think there's an understanding in that. Mm-hmm. Um, not maybe a, 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 an understanding as we understand it, like fragmented, like I understand it because, you know, this is true about the mind and all these other things, but it comes in that wholeness of right-minded perception. It's just, ah, uh, you know, it's an aha, uh-huh, not a kind of understand mm-hmm. linear type thing. And it's just in what we discussed before about not seeing children as any different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, even thinking that the way you relate to them is any different. It gets back to, like you were saying, right mindedness and coming to that. Because it's, um, you, can't, you can't teach something until you get clear on it yourself, mm-hmm. no matter how you work with it. And you really don't want to even join with someone, so to speak in a false concept and then try to say, well, I'll do that first and then later on I'll turn it right side up. I mean, that's the error of, of a lot of psychology where they teach, you know, let the children develop a healthy ego, learn how to function in this world, and then <laughs> at some point turn but it I, around. But it sounds like you're saying that this is not good for them and that would be like saying 12-step programs are not good. You know, nothing where you come and share information or feelings is not good. And I, I, I don't see that as any different than this that we're doing. Yeah, that's not, that would be an interpretation of what I'm saying. I really have to take this in and be clear about it. it. Again, the way it really comes back to is that it's always my lesson. So in other words, to even break it out into parts and say 12-step groups or grief work or this or this or that and to start judging which events and systems are more helpful or less helpful or if they're not, that's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that it's always my own lesson and that I'm always teaching myself. And so it's pulling it away from the distracting kind of an argument to try to break it apart in terms of persons and groups and situations because that's a distraction and saying, oh gee, until I get clear about life, how can I teach life? We've had the discussion even with education. You know, it seems as if in this world that education is a very helpful thing. There's no doubt. There's a lot of money that's been put in. There's a lot of reforms that take place. Has education ever helped say change anything? Has or is there less war because of education? No. Is there less disease because of education? No. Is there less conflict because of education? Is there more no. peace? 
is there more peace because of education? And I was trained in education. <laughs> I, I was trained as a teacher educator. I had I had student teachers that would come into into my class, and I was a teaching assistant. And I was in graduate school before I got into psychology and teachers education. And what I had to do was really come to see that that education, as we call it, education in this world, is is not the solution. But there is a, an education that I call it the Holy Spirit's curriculum. That is the answer to the end of conflict, the end of war, the end of peace. And it's very different than the curriculum of education in this world. You know, there was Fulgham once wrote the book, Everything I Needed, Really Needed to Know, I learned in kindergarten. And, and if you follow the basic thinking of that book, you know, treat each other with respect and clean up after, you know, he was, he was simplifying things, but there was something real that struck a chord when people read that, because yeah. it was like all this learning that they learned, all this specialization and everything in later years. And for me, it's interesting to speak about this because somebody can say, well, you may be, sounds like you're down on education. And I said, hey, I was in education, formal education for 22 years, 22 and a half years. <laughs> it's not like I haven't really tried it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I gave it a big, <laughs> a big shot, you know. And it was helpful, some of the skills have been helpful. Yeah, it seems. I mean, even that, it's like mm -hmm. that's being redirected, and as a metaphor it is, but, but I really, the skill that I really want to learn is healing. And mm -hmm. so all of those seemingly separate skills. That has to do with skills. an eighth grade education. Yeah, it, right. It doesn't yeah, have no to education. do. Yeah. If you understood the concept. You know, for me, in a practical way, which is what I hear you talking about, is, you know, where I am with it is I'm really questioning education. I happen to have, you know, Mandy and Matthew, who are you know, mm -hmm. in second and fifth grade in public ed schools, and I'm seeing what it is they're learning, and as I look more and more closely at that, I'm seeing that it's really not, doesn't have anything to do with anything, and yet, for me, it's not to get all worried about trying to fix the school system or yanking them out of school and putting them into an alternative school or any of that because those are all things I've thought of but for me it's coming back and saying the healing has to take place in my mind that's the only place for me to focus my attention that's where the healing has to be and then from that place whatever happens out here on the screen with those two people will come from that it'll just be a, a, a natural outpicturing of, of where I am with with healing of my own mind. So it's like whenever I get worried about Mandy and Matthew learning or, or being taught to conform or buying into the game of the world or building up their egos or any of that, I just have to say, pull it back. This is where the healing has to take place. And so, and, and you know, I am not of any help to them at all with an unhealed mind. No when matter I'm, what school system. Yeah, is. it wouldn't matter if they were in the best school setting at all. If I'm not at peace, if there's conflict in my mind or confusion in my mind, mm -hmm. then I'm not going to be of any help. So that's, that's how I look at anything that I'm doing, like anything I'm involved in or any, anywhere I'm seeing that I can be of any help others, mm -hmm. I, it's like, oh, bring it back to my mind. This is where the healing has to take place. Then, if I feel guided to go and be with this group or that group or another group, then great. But it will be from a whole different place. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah, make that, sense? That sounds because then, it's like, it, there's nothing right or wrong or good or bad about any of these groups. If they're helpful, great. If somebody finds them of value, great, go go to it, 12 staff or grief counseling or whatever it is. But for me, I have to really focus on my own healing. It's yeah. also the purpose, too, in the sense that I've always had a real positive connotation with talking about feeling. Because I, from experience of keeping things in and repressing and everything, you can see that there's a lot of destructive things that seem to come from those defense mechanisms. However, the positive connotation I have in talking about feelings has to be questioned as well. Because a lot of times, 
even in the low, I, I would always, in teacher observation,